Welcome back everyone, M. Mead here. Today, I am starting an in-depth instructional time trial tutorial series. In this video, I will teach you all how to play N64 Bowser's Castle. I have a strong history on this track, with setting three different world record runs here in the past, and currently still stand a fourth in the world with a time of 2.31.397. I'll explain my strategies and techniques I've learned over the years that will benefit both newer players and even the most advanced players. Let's get started. In this tutorial, I'll be covering how to play this track specifically with Funky Kong on the Bowser bike. Daisy on the Mach bike will not be covered as I am most proficient with Funky Kong on this track. I have many backup strategies to compensate for different situations. And though this track is relatively simple and not really that hard besides two key areas which I'll chime on and go a lot more in depth later on, this track definitely has a certain flow. And if you mess up one turn or alignment, it can take you two to three turns to correct things. And I'll show you what that means when I break down each turn. As you'll notice throughout this entire tutorial, I actually recorded all of these clips with an input display, which I find will be useful to players using any controller. This is the analog stick. This is the D-pad or your wheelie input and trick input. This is the accelerator. The top right line is my drift. And the top left line is when I use my shroom. After starting on lap one, I do not wheelie right away. For newer players who may not know, there is a small window, probably around half a second I would say, after your start boost begins where you do not gain time if you start to wheelie right away. The purpose of this is to minimize the time you're accelerating after the chain wheelie before the first drift. If you were to wheelie right away right as you cross the finish line to start your race, you will have to re-chain your wheelie sooner. And if you miss that chain wheelie, you are losing more time because you are spending more time accelerating before the first turn. I move forward, then start my wheelie and slightly turn right to make a left to right alignment as I'll demonstrate with this arrow. At this point, we arrive to the most inconsistent part of this track right away, this bridge. Now, the creators of this game thought it was a great idea to make the bridge an uneven surface and not perfectly flat, like in the original version of this track on the N64 game. You will find that you will get many bounces on some attempts or ride completely flat with no bounce whatsoever. There is no way to completely be consistent, particularly on laps 2 and 3. I'm going to give you all a simple breakdown of this bridge. If we break down the structure of the bridge, there are different color shades on the bridge as you will see here. A bright shade in the middle, which progressively gets darker towards either edge. The flattest part of this bridge is actually on the right side, as seen here. Back in the day, players such as Rocky Light, I believe he was the first one anyway, would align himself to the right and purposely on ride on this side of the bridge. My method and his method are not faster or slower, just personal preference. Now past the bridge, your wheelie will end just before the shadow disappears on the ground. Rechain your wheelie and we arrive at the first turn. This grass has a slight border of non-heavy grass where you will not lose speed. I try to land on the corner of the brick or the grass and start my drift right around here. And exit on the opposing corner, barely avoiding the grass. You can either soft drift the first turn in one fluid movement, as demonstrated here, or you can rock back and forth and finish your main turbo as demonstrated here. Soft drifting is faster, though you need a near perfect alignment into this turn. If you are too wide and you start a soft drift for this turn, you charge the main turbo way too fast and you'll be going right into the grass. A very tight alignment works best for a soft drift here. At this point, I should explain what it means to delay your drift and what soft drifting actually is. When you hop to start your drift, you are airborne for a brief period of time before you hit the pavement and start drifting. Many newer players will turn the direction they want to go and the drift button at the same time, which is considerably slower in the majority of circumstances on most tracks. Instead, you want to hop to start your drift, but do not turn right away. Wait until you're about to hit the pavement and then turn the direction you want to go for the turn. Soft drifting in a nutshell basically means instead of turning hard left or hard right, you are in between the notches or in between neutral on any edge of your turning radius, no matter what your controller is. This will help you charge your main turbos faster. If you are excessively rocking back and forth trying to charge a main turbo, you are losing a considerable amount of time on any track. 
On most turns, you want to turn one direction until you have fully charged your main turbo. You will want your alignment out of this first turn into the next turn with this general alignment as demonstrated with this arrow. A very slight right to left angle. Your wheelie will end at slightly different times depending on how you did the first turn. If you did a soft drift, you go into your wheelie a lot sooner, so you'll chain a bit earlier. Whereas if you did the rocking back and forth method, you will end up chaining a bit later, mostly right before you start your drift for this next turn. Generally, your wheelie will end right around here. You can either re-wheelie or initiate your drift depending on your alignment. As demonstrated, most of these turns have diagonal indents. I aim to take these as tight as possible. Now, after you've charged your first main turbo here, initiate your wheelie for a general alignment like this. And you want to generally start your next drift right around here. Now, please keep in mind two things. First off, where and when you start your drift on any turn for any track entirely depends on your alignment into the turn. The more you play, the more you will have a general feel for when you start your drifts on most turns. I will give a general area as to when to start drifting, but ultimately it is entirely up to you on your judgment. And second off, what will especially help a lot of newer players is this. You may find that when you're playing, when you're starting your drift on any turn, you're watching at your main turbo sparks for when you can release your main turbo versus looking at your surroundings and what your alignment is out of each turn. One of my biggest tips I have is to focus more on looking at what your alignment is going to be after your turn versus focusing entirely on your main turbo. I did this probably for the first, I would say, at least a good year of time trialing, but now at this point, I never look at the sparks and when I get my main turbo on any track you will get this with a lot more time and a lot more practice. Once you're at a more advanced level, I promise that you will no longer look for when the main turbo is fully charged. Now we head to the first Thwomp Room. This is the general alignment you are looking for out of the last turn. And I have several tips for this room. First, I want to show off the Thwomps. Thwomps in this game have a few quirks. First, though it may be obvious, they have angled corners as demonstrated like this. Second, their hitbox is strange as you can go slightly inside either side of the thwomp. Thirdly, note the small gap between the thwomps here. I'm mostly trying to align myself between this very small gap, but you will find success with a slightly deviated angle in either direction. There is some room for error here. Sometimes you may notice I say it slightly flick the analog stick right or left to correct my alignment. Keep in mind, I have poured hundreds of hours into this track, so I know how much I need to turn to save the alignment. I can say that this is one of the harder alignments to master while learning the track, so please don't get discouraged if you find that you are needing to turn a lot to fix your alignment. You can opt to hold your main turbo slightly longer to take your time with your alignment, which I find helps. When you're at a more advanced level on this track, if you're driving fast enough lap 1, you can actually go under the middle thwomp if you execute the entire lap up until this point very well and you have a full chain wheelie. You can do it with a worse chain wheelie, but it is considerably harder. When you start your drift for this turn, sometimes you'll find that you'll clip the thwomp, particularly the right one. This is because you are starting your drift too early. Aim to extend your wheelie until you pass the shadow of the thwomp before starting your drift. If you start drifting too early, you start losing speed right away as you are no longer in a wheelie, and that slight speed loss will either make you clip the thwomp or get squashed altogether. You want your general alignment out of this turn to be like this, mostly as straight as you can be. These next few turns have bigger angles in them compared to the first few castle turns, so you have more room to charge your main turbos. The sliding thwomps on lap 1 will not pose any problem, even at a slower racing speed. It is at this point where we come to the hardest part of this track. The staircase, or as we like to call it the superman, and the shroom spot. Now you may be wondering why I'm saying this even though we're only entering the sliding thwomp room. Remember how I said this track has a flow to it? Your alignments in into each of these turns will influence this entire section, so pay close attention. You're aiming for a near straight alignment like this. You do not want to be in the center of the red carpet, but slightly left of center like this. Being right in the center of the carpet makes this sequence of turns far more difficult and far more awkward. 
I will explain my backup strategy shortly. Start your drift right around here. You want to release your main turbo into wheelie with a right to left alignment like this into the bridge before the staircase turn. If you find that you are in the center of the red carpet, you want to start your drift slightly later. You can soft drift this in almost a, down, a straight down motion, or you can make it easier by counter steering like this and taking your time to correct your alignment into the staircase turn. The actual staircase drift itself is arguably the hardest drift on this entire track in my opinion. Very easy to get frustrated with it if you do not know what you are doing. Like the bridge at the very beginning of the track, the color shades are similar as you will see. Bright in the center and getting darker to either edge. You want to start your drift at this darker orange spot in this little corner. Keep in mind that the edge of the bridge is not entirely straight. If you manage to start your drift in this little indented section, you will almost always fail your drift. To make this drift as consistent as you can, hop here and wait until you're about to land on the orange section. Upon landing, turn very hard right and hold it. Do not rock back and forth. This is one fluid movement. If done properly, you will glide up on the bridge and either have slight air time and land on the carpeted floor or get no air time and transition directly from the bridge to the carpeted floor. Round the turn and as soon as you charge your main turbo, wheelie and continue to turn right briefly. Here is what this accomplishes if done properly. When you execute your wheelie the instant the main turbo comes out, you almost always get a ton of air time and you clear almost every single staircase except for these bottom two. This is considerably faster than getting the main turbo out later and sometimes writing down every single staircase and losing a lot of time. Of course this will not work every single time. Here is what happens if you get what I personally call the micro bounce. Sometimes you will do everything correct, but when you land onto the carpeted floor, you get a micro bounce which both slows you down slightly and pushes you slightly left. When you wheelie and fly over the staircase, you are far too much to the left, and it is almost impossible to make the shroom spot with this alignment without losing a ton of time. If you do, I estimate you will lose at least 0.3 in the entire section, or more depending on if you do it worse. Now that I reviewed the most consistent way to do the Superman, and also what can happen if you get the micro bounce, here is what I personally do that I find to be the fastest but also a lot harder to execute compared to the first method. I turn hard right instead of delaying my drift as I take advantage of the upward slope with this movement and I essentially get a slip drift. I prefer this way but the initial way I presented is the most consistent setup which I suggest you opt for first when learning this. I believe the way I do this it is barely faster by at most 10 to 20 milliseconds per lap. Value consistency over absolute fastest driving first. Here is where many players go wrong. You did the staircase drift so well and you got the perfect airtime. But then players do nothing until they land. This is bad for a few reasons. First, this makes you more prone to landing completely flat on the second to last staircase and flying far forward. Makes your shrooms very wide and will lose at least 0.2 or a lot more depending on the severity of it. Second, players tend to get a slip drift and tend to go very wide if this happens. Instead, you want to point the nose of your bike down as if you're trying to nosedive a trick. This slightly saves some time, will severely decrease the incidence of landing flat on the staircase, and the odds of getting the slip drift out of it are a lot less likely in all the time I've played on this track. Now we get to the shroom. This is the second hardest part about this entire section. You want to start your drift right around here and wait briefly before shrooming. If you shroom right away, you will go far too wide and lose too much time. Way too long and you will either hit the wall or hit the bush from going far too tight. Getting the sweet spot of waiting just the right amount of time and turning hard left takes time to get used to. This takes a lot of practice. So please do not get frustrated if you aren't performing this cleanly right away. May seem a little bit insignificant, but I should explain this bush right here, or rather all of them as they are all the same. The bush's hitbox is not the very edge that you clearly see. You can actually go so far inside the bush that Funky Kong entirely disappears. 
This is when you know you have pulled off a fantastic shroom. You may think you are home free with this shroom beyond the bush, but stay focused. If you release your main turbo to wheelie too soon, you will go right into the grass on the right hand side upon your exit. In this game, we are trying to optimize all the different boosts we get, which are main turbos, boost panel boosts, trick boosts, and shrooms. You want to wait until the entire shroom boost wears off. Only then should you release your main turbo. This not only saves time for each lap, but the very slight delay between both boosts helps you get back onto the brick pathway closer to the middle, so you are not as likely to go into the grass when you start your wheelie. Upon your shroom exit, aim to have a moderate right to left angle here and start your drift right around here. This is one turn where it is okay to turn and drift at the same time. And here's why. It really does not matter how fast you charge this main turbo most of the time. It does not need to be frame perfect. The reason for this is because if you were to soft drift this turn perfectly and wheelie right away, your alignment into this bridge into the spiral turn will either be right down the middle or even very far to the right. Instead, you want a right to left angle into the spiral turn to start it tight. If you find that getting this alignment into the spiral is difficult, you can purposely go into the grass slightly with a soft drift. When you do this, the slight speed loss will help you take your time making your alignment. You will chain a wheelie before the spiral, and this will be at different times depending on how you took the last turn. As mentioned in the beginning, there are two hard parts on this track, and the spiral turn is the other hardest part of the track I have found for many players. And many players I find make simple errors that can be solved pretty easy and save a lot of time. You may find that when you charge your first main turbo and release it to start charging the second one, you shift very far to the right. You don't want to release your main turbo right away when you have it fully charged. You want to hold it slightly and then rechain your drift and continue to hold very hard left. Holding hard left this entire time in the sequence is critical. If done properly, you will maintain your distance to the wall. This is one part of the track where I don't necessarily have a visual cue when to release my main turbo into wheelie. It's one of those cases where you have to quote unquote feel it. Though I do have a certain alignment I want to have into the trick boost. To explain how I take this spiral exit, I exaggerate my spiral exit so blindly to the point where I sometimes see through the spiral wall from how tight the exit is. I charge my main turbo, I hold it for a little bit. As you can see in the input viewer, I counter steer really quickly. I feel like this is just a habit of mine, but I feel like maybe like slightly shifting right and then turning very hard left back the other way, it gives me this sort of alignment where I initiate my wheelie right after the main turbo, I turn slightly, and I sort of just glide up into the transition from the inclining spiral to the flat exit and to the trick boost. For a more consistent way, you can wait until you're about to go flat at the top of the spiral and aim to have a left to right alignment like this into the trick panel. Though this will lose some time. The sooner you can release your main turbo with the wheelie without losing speed when realigning yourself, the better. This is the general alignment you want to have into this trick panel. Try to aim within this portion of the trick panel with this alignment. Once I go off the trick panel, I delay my trick. For those of you who are newer players, you may be tricking right when you hit a boost panel. This actually loses time in most scenarios on most tracks. You actually have several frames where you can be airborne and then do your trick. This is what's called a delayed trick. This gives you lower air time which saves time. To save even more time specifically on this ramp, you can turn in your wheelie after you start hitting the boost panel up until the very point you are going to trick. If done properly, this lowers your air time even further, saving more time. You want to swing your trick to land on the banister over here and aim to land in the middle of it. Now here are two backup strategies. Let's say in this first scenario you exit the spiral too early and you are angled too far to the right like this. Depending on the severity, you need to turn in your wheelie right before the trick panel to not hit into the brick wall. If you are not angled into the brick wall, but instead you are just angled too harshly, delay your trick and turn slightly left to still lower your airtime. If done properly, you will trick forward and land either in the middle of the banister 
or slightly left of center. Upon landing, hold your drift button momentarily to do a mini drift into wheelie and turn in your trick boost to correct your alignment. If you are angled too far wide in scenario 2, you can either trick as normal and avoid the banister altogether. And for those curious, the banister ending versus tricking normally and doing that second trick loses roughly 0.1 per lap. Or you can drift on the ramp and make it onto the banister. I sometimes try to do this not really, but I tend to overcompensate the drift and fall into the lava most of the time. This is entirely up to you and your control of drifting on the ramp to trick. If you land on the banister, you have an easy alignment into the last turn. You want to be aligned straight, but aim to be in the middle of the banister or slightly left of center. Even if you're slightly right of center, you can fall off. This is because both this top banister and the bottom banister aren't parallel to each other. Once you're airborne falling to the lower level, you want to ever so slightly turn right or turn a bit more intently to have the slight left to right angle into the last turn. What this does is when you do the last drift with a spin drift, which I'll explain shortly, you are cutting the last corner in such a way that you are accomplishing a few things. You tend to cut more of the corner, you tend to not smack into the opposing wall and fall off as often, and you tend to end up being more towards the center of the road, entering laps 2 and 3, compared to being very far left otherwise. If you cannot land on the banister, and instead have to do the two tricks, try to have this alignment into this portion of the lip, where you get the trick. Delay your trick and aim to have that slightly left to right alignment. This makes it harder to pull off as you have a trick boost into the last drift most of the time. But trust me, as when you're practicing more, this becomes a lot easier to pull off. Now to the very last turn of the lap itself, the spin drift. Please turn your attention to the input display. I will break down a spin drift simply. First, you want to hop and drift in a direction you want to turn like so. Remember how I said you are airborne for a slight period of time before landing back on the pavement? Do a hard counter steer in the opposite direction you are trying to drift while you're in the air and then turn very hard back in the direction you want to go like this. This helps to take turns a lot tighter and makes this turn very, very consistent. The way these used to go before spin drifting was discovered is that you would just turn hard right on the last turn, and the success rate of making this turn was probably less than 30 or even 20%, and I think that's being generous, honestly. Learning how to spin drift in general is one of the most useful things to know when you're playing this game. As it relates to this exact turn, you want to start your spin drift slightly after you pass this hut on the left hand side. You are trying to cut as much of this corner as possible. If you want to play this super safe, you can spin drift extremely late and land on the ground nearly right away. This loses time, but it may be easier for newer players who are first starting to learn how to spin drift. Once you are fully charged your main turbo, you want to delay your wheelie right after your main turbo and to have this general left to right alignment. Though this bridge is very inconsistent and I still lose the majority of my runs to this thing, I found a few things to try and bring up the consistency of chaining your wheelie on the bridge. I find that slightly delaying when you initiate your wheelie after the main turbo helps to have your chain wheelie right around this general spot on the middle of the bridge. I find that if you wheelie right away or even delay your wheelie further, you have to chain your wheelie either right as you're entering the bridge or closer to exiting the bridge, and that's where I find most of the bounces come in. Other than that, I spam the D-pad instead of trying to properly time it from how inconsistent it is to ride this flat. And ultimately, thirdly, having this slight left to right alignment has been the best way I've found to try and minimize bounces as much as I can within my control. This completes my summary on how to drive a proper lap on this track. Nothing notably really changes on each lap besides being either very fast on lap 2 to go under the thwomp in the first thwomp room, this is also the same for lap 3, second off being on very low 231 pace where you can go around to the left of the sliding thwomp in the last thwomp room, or thirdly if you're trying to sub 233 the fire pillar is just shooting up at the end. 
I will explain the last scenario for you. You want your alignment to be to the very left as demonstrated here. Hop onto the trick panel and turn and trick at the same time, avoiding the fire pillar. If done properly, you will land in this general area and take the ending sequence as normal as I explained previously. If you want to safely beat this fire pillar on lap 3 and avoid swinging around it altogether, you want to have at least a 50.8 lap 1 and also a 50.8 on lap 2 with lap 3 going cleanly. You can beat it with a 51.0 lap 1 and a 51.0 lap 2 if you drive lap 3 ridiculously fast. Now to wrap up this tutorial, I thought it would be very useful to do some commentary over a completed run of mine that was only within point 0.2 of my personal best, and to explain what was going through my head at each part of the race, what was right, what went wrong, and what I did to compensate for the errors I made during the run. I think this would be very useful to summarize everything that I went over in this entire video, and to see what it looks like in a fully completed run. Had a very routine left to right alignment there into the first turn. Though I was a little bit slightly wider than I would have liked for a soft drift first turn, so I did a rocking back and forth first turn instead. Had a decent alignment here, but a little bit more right than what I would prefer, so I started my drift a little bit early to have a better alignment into the next turn. My alignment was very slightly to the left, I was fast enough to beat this, but I still turned at the very end to compensate to make sure I didn't hit into the thwomp. Near perfect alignment here. Perfect alignment here. That was a very excellent turn and my alignment into this uh, staircase turn is very good. Very good shroom lap one. and a very good alignment into the spiral. Unfortunately, I was a bit more aligned to the right than what I normally would have liked. So as you'll see here, I'm gonna go off the ramp. I'll delay my trick and turn left to minimize some airtime, then do my trick and slightly drift with my landing to fix my alignment. I backed that up pretty well. I had a very good alignment here, slightly left to right. You want to be facing basically in the center of that bush and to the far distance over there. Not sure if that was a full chain or not. Definitely at least a half wheelie, I'm pretty sure. Again, my alignment was a little bit too wide for me to do the soft drift, so I opted for the rocking back and forth drift instead. Again, the same alignment as I had on lap one. So I slightly started my drift a little bit early to make sure my alignment into the following turn was proper. Now with a 50.4 lap 1, and at the very least a half chain lap 2, I knew I was definitely fast enough to beat this middle thwomp. A little bit tighter of an alignment as I would like into this turn, but it wasn't really that bad. I didn't do anything major to back this up. Again, a very good alignment into this turn. As you see, Funky Kong stuttered a little bit there, and that little bit was enough to throw me off. So instead of being more so left to right and landing to the right of the carpet lap two, I was a little bit closer to the center of the carpet, and that messed up my shroom lap two, as you will see. Look at that, I started almost right in the middle versus a little bit more to the right. That shroom is considerably wider than my normal, at least in comparison to lap one. So in that entire sequence, I definitely lost at least 0.1. Another strong alignment to the spiral lap 2. So I released my main turbo a little bit too early there, and I swung a lot more farther out to the right as I normally do. Now this alignment was just absolutely horrible. So again, I backed it up in the same way as lap 1. I turned slightly left on the boost panel, I delayed my trick slightly, and then I did a mini little drift when I landed to uh, fix my alignment when I landed. Ooh. 
turn very hard right in the air to make sure my alignment was fixed for the last turn. Even then, that was still not tight enough at all of an alignment, so this last turn was pretty bad. So now this alignment is actually pretty good. I could probably soft drift this alignment here, but I turn very slightly left just to compensate. Got a drop chain. And as you can see there, again, I didn't have the tight alignment for the soft drift, so I opted for the rocking back and forth drift on the first turn. This alignment was perfect, but as you'll see, I rocked back and forth on this first turn, which was a very poor decision and I lost some time. You want these turns to be one fluid movement and you do not want to be rocking back and forth. This alignment was absolutely perfect, did not need a turn at all. So now I knew I was not fast enough to beat the left of the sliding thwomp on lap 3, so I purposely aligned myself a little bit slightly wide here, and what I do is I just drift a little bit slightly late, and I hold my main turbo into the room, and I align myself to where I am barely grazing the thwomp on the right side lap 3. Now with this, I am right in the middle of the carpet on lap 3. So I delay my drift, and then I drift in such a way that I'm in rocking in the little notches between the bottom left and almost like straight down. And what that does is I'm slightly turning left but also going slightly wider. So by the time I have my wheelie into the bridge, my alignment has been fixed like this. That was almost a flawless Superman drift. That shroom was actually good, it's just that I didn't start my drift early enough. If I had drifted a little bit early, that shroom would have been amazing. My alignment to the spiral on all three laps was very strong. I went very wide here on lap three as well. Unfortunately, I released the first main turbo too soon and I lost some time. At the very least, I had a normal alignment into this ramp lap 3. Had a very low trick, but I unfortunately had a bad landing. All this together, I lost a pretty easy 231.4 run here. Again, turned slightly right to have a better alignment into the last turn. And a clean last turn to finish with 231.589. This time would be 10 milliseconds off of 10th place worldwide as of today's upload date. Not bad. This concludes my first comprehensive, in-depth time trial tutorial. I really hope that you all enjoyed this video and found some value out of this video, whether you are a new player or even an advanced player. It would help the channel a lot to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and to also subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. As always, I am very open to constructive criticism on my videos to further improve the quality of these videos being uploaded to the channel. A poll will be up in the community tab of the channel to pick the next track I'll do a tutorial on. It'll be between Maple Treeway and GCN Mario Circuit. As always, thank you all so much for your support and for watching. See you all in the next video.